and this goes on for a long time. Uh, he's anointing people. We hear a lot about different anointings. Uh, could you please define for us, biblically, what is the correct understanding to be anointed, and can we be today, and if so, how? Do you want to say something, Justin? Sure. Well, Scripture teaches that if you are a Christian, you're anointed. If you have been regenerated by God's Holy Spirit, you are anointing. Uh, you are anointed. It is not a, it's not a feeling. It's not a buzz. It's not an experience. It's a reality. First uh, John, two, twenty. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you all know this is. This is not for a select few. It's not that some Christians have a super special anointing that the rest of the common Christians don't have. Uh, that is that is a division of Christians into classes, the haves and the have nots, you know, to say, oh, well, so-and-so is anointed. He has, he has a great anointing. If you're in Christ, you are anointed. And there, there's no division of classes within Christianity. We're all, we are one in Christ. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. And so this is a false understanding of a biblical reality. It's used to manipulate people. It's used to manipulate their, their emotions and their behavior, and it's also used to elevate the whatever false teacher you're looking at, elevate him to a status that is above everyone else. He has a different source of authority. He, he has a, a unique access to God, and he gets divine revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit, from Christ, this pipeline from heaven to various false teacher and that is that is their way of insulating themselves against biblical criticism well if you can't find this in the bible don't worry about it because i have the anointing god has spoken to me directly and so if you can't find it in scripture don't sweat it it's okay i've got the anointing i've got this inside avenue to god regularly we'll hear we can't critique them because we can't touch god's anointed <laughs> let me let me play advocate Okay. Sure. Uh, here's 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 your problem. Uh, you like organs and cellos. This is our way of expressing ourselves in worship. Mm -hmm. Why would you judge something that is so clearly filled with the Spirit? Because it's just mindless emotional hysteria. It's just hysterics. It's mind numbing hysteria. It's not about worship. Let me let me let me explain worship in a simple way. The deeper your understanding of the truth of God, the deeper your understanding of God Himself, the higher your worship goes. Worship is directly correlated to understanding. The richer your theology, the more full your grasp of biblical truth, the more elevated your worship becomes. L low understanding of God, superficial, shallow understanding of God leads to shallow, superficial, contentless hysteria. You can whip that up. You can create that kind of frenzy. It has nothing to do with worship. It isn't worship. It's not connected to worship. It is sheer hysteria and a mindless expression. Um, you, you, you've been singing hymns this week. Why? Because there's rich theology in hymns. We, we don't have to go hysterical. We want your mind fully engaged. Hymns, I like hymns. I don't need to hear fire, fire, fire a thousand times. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need seven eleven choruses, seven words eleven times over. Uh, I need to advance the doctrine. I need to advance the richness. I need to deepen the truth and broaden the truth. And hymns have verses, not just five words repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, but never really with the nuances of theology.